speak to Ayo Johnson now, an African affairs specialist live in London for us. Ayo, deadlock, deadlock, deadlock for a month now. We've got deadlines now. It is getting increasingly difficult to see this ending any other way other than a violent end. Yes, yes, it's, it's, we're heading in that direction, but we would wish we don't come to that. We've, we're expecting and hoping that there'll be further negotiations, but it, it's the amount of it's the impact that it's having on the Ivorian people is desperate. Large numbers of Ivorian people have disappeared. No, countless others have been injured with clashes with the military forces. And uh, there's an influx of large numbers of refugees leaving um, Ivory Coast, impacting on poor countries like Liberia. So the impact all around is very, very serious. And Mr. Bagbo is squarely to blame on this, I would say. Well, what do you think Bagbo really wants, other than staying in power? Because he talks about so many different things. He's talked about, hey, we'll talk, it's no problem. Now his supporters are saying, we're going to come to the hotel if you don't go out by midnight. It's not actually the clearest of pictures from him. Certainly not. Um, Kamal, this is a very desperate situation. Um, he's threatened that uh, Mr. Motara should leave before the deadline, which is um, in a few hours' time. Um, clearly, that's not going to happen. It remains to be seen whether he can actually, um, his forces would actually storm the, the hotel. That in itself will cause untold problems with the the um, uh, United Nations troops who are clearly there. Um, I think uh, it's, it's all the signs of a very desperate man, a man who's found himself in a very difficult place and finding how on earth can he get out of this one. And is he doing one of the classic things? I don't want to offend anyone or be too cliched here, but he's got an issue with France. He's blaming France for trying to interfere, this classic sort of thing of blaming the, the former colonial power. Very much so. Um, we would always hear these sort of antics whenever we have these sort of situations. But again, it's best place for the French to leave, come out of this equation and actually leave it to the rest of the international community to criticise him. Because each time they do do so, it, it lends uh, into his hands for him to be able to make such claims. But on balance, I think he thinks he, he's, he's found himself in a real mess. The, the situation is very messy and, and it would appear that the international consensus is very much in favour of Mr. Motar and Mr. Bagwood doesn't like that and he's trying to find a way out and he's very very desperate I think the ECOWAS need to offer him a carrot of some description to see how we can come out of this I'm altogether. glad you brought up ECOWAS because I want to quickly mention that just before something else because uh, we've talked about Bagbo using force or not uh, ECOWAS has made all sorts of threats as well there are some reports unconfirmed ones that they wanted talking about sending in a thousand troops do you think ECOWAS is the type of group a strong enough group to come good on that um, I, well, this is the question. If ECOWAS doesn't come true to what they've claimed already that they're capable of doing, which is taking force when Babu refuses to comply to their terms, it would mean that ECOWAS would appear very, very weak. And if Mr. Babu realized that there are cracks within the ECOWAS, within its members, he would exploit that terribly. Mm. Uh, so it's very important that ECOWAS stays together and they actually say what they mean and mean what they say. Final thought from you, and it actually relates to the first point you were making to, about the, the, the wider impact. Um, talk that Liberia is setting up uh, refugee camps, or what will amount to refugee camps, close to the border to, to deal with any overs. But I mean, are we looking at regional conflict here or regional unrest? Well, uh, what you've got to realise is that most of the states in West Africa are fragile states. Um, and the, 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 the reasons why they're fragile, issues to do with governance, issues to do with democracy, issues to do with human rights, and a whole raft with coups and wars and so on and so forth. And it, it's, it's so apparent and so, so strange that a country like Liberia, who was very, very poor, who themselves were seeking assistance not too long ago, are the ones for which the Ivorians are running to and assisting. I think on balance, I think it makes, uh, it, it applies excessive pressure on governments who, who in West Africa to see how they'll be able to deal with the influx of refugees, how they'll be able to address this problem moving forward in the long term, which is going to cost a lot of money, mm. especially if ECOWAS is to see through what it's already said it will do. I, it's always really interesting talking to you. Thank you for your time. Ayo Johnson there live in London for us. Much appreciated. Uh, now to some unrest in Tunisia that we've seen. Al Jazeera has learned lawyers who'd been demonstrating against the government have been given, quote, savage beatings on Friday. They had gathered to demand the release of people arrested during a series of violent protests earlier in the week. The president of the Tunisian Human Rights League has told us police beat the lawyers with clubs, punched and kicked them as well. Tunisia's president, meanwhile, has sacked the governor of Sidi, uh, Sidi Bouzid, the region where those rallies over rising unemployment uh, started.
Uganda struggling to contain an outbreak of yellow fever that's already claimed 48 lives. More than 190 people are confirmed to have the disease which broke out two months ago. Uh, but Uganda's health ministry says it's still waiting for the vaccines to arrive. Yellow fever appears in mosquito breeding areas such as stagnant water. It can kill if it goes untreated. Some other parts of the world now. A US drone strike has killed four people in Pakistan. The missiles fired from the unmanned aircraft struck targets in the Ghulam Khan district of North Waziristan. It is unclear who was killed in that particular attack. Christians in Baghdad have begun burying their dead after a series of coordinated attacks targeting their community. Two people were killed in a series of explosions right across the Iraqi capital. From there, Rao Yurage has the latest. Houses that should have been adorned with Christmas decorations, pockmarked by violence instead. Iraqi Christians once again under attack. 